One of the most important things almost any farmer can do is try everything to drought proof his crop. We're going to talk about some steps we would encourage you to take on your farm today. All right, we just came out of 2012 and 2013 super drought years and really 2014 we got almost all of our rain in the month of June and then we were pretty dry outside of that for a good portion of the year. We're in an area of the country that's dry more times than not. Maybe you're in an area that you say well we normally get decent rains but occasionally we have some dry areas of our field or we have some dry times. Either way you just have to look at how can you reduce stress in your your crops and just by doing a few simple steps they can benefit your crop every year but even more so if we get dry. In my opinion here's the most important thing you've got to have good balanced fertility in your soil because what happens with your crop is when it runs short on any one nutrient what it's going to do is it's going to start pulling more water in even if it doesn't need water yet it's going to start pulling more water in because that's how the nutrients get into the plant so in effect you've made your crop a water waster that's terrible don't do that to your crop have the right balance of nutrients and the right amount of nutrients in your soil. If you need help with that, get some soil testing done. Learn how to read a soil test. There's lots of good information out there, but all I can tell you is until you get your soil in balance and you have the right amount of nutrients out there, you're not going to have a very drought tolerant crop. Well, another thing when you're looking at tillage, tillage is something that actually releases moisture up out of the soil. So for our farm in a dry area of the country, we're trying to minimize our tillage to conserve moisture. Now, other areas of the country may be going to reduce till, to try and preserve their soil and stop soil erosion, that's fine too. But if you are concerned about losing moisture and keeping all the moisture that you have, going to no-till or reduced tillage is certainly a method that can help you maintain that moisture level in your soil. The next thing I want to get to is fertilizer placement. If you put all your fertilizer in a broadcast and then you do minimum till or no-till, guess what? You've got nutrient stratification because nutrients like phosphorus, potassium, and zinc don't move down in the soil very well. Phosphorus hardly moves at all. What I'm trying to say here is I want you to think about this for just a second. Okay, if things get dry on your farm, where does it dry out first? The top six inches or six to 12 inches deep? Well, obviously it's gonna dry out in the top six inches, right? Okay, so let's say you got roots going down six to 12 inches deep. That's great that they can pull some water up, but if there are no nutrients there, what good does it do? It's just like for you or me, if I'm hungry and all you do is keep giving me water and water and water, I'm going to lose a lot of weight fast, okay? I'm not as a crop. Someone say that's not a bad <laughs> well, idea, Brian. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> trying to say as a crop, I'm not going to get top yield. If all you give me is water, you've got to give me nutrients too. So place some of your fertilizer deeper. This is a much bigger deal in a drier area of the country because we don't have moisture in that top three to six inches in enough regular basis to get all the nutrients into the crop all the time. One mistake that farmers make if they're in areas that are really dry normally or if they're just having a very dry year is they start cutting back expenses in terms of pest control. You just cannot afford to have weeds or insects in your field if you're worried about moisture. If you're not getting enough rainfall it's pretty obvious. If a weed is out there competing for water and nutrients with your crop it's going to cause even more yield loss than normal on a drought type year. And as far as insects go, if your plant is not getting enough moisture, you can't afford to have a bug out there feeding on that plant. So make sure you're watching out for bug control and weed control all throughout the season to stop moisture loss. Here's another incredibly important thing. It's reducing compaction. We want to get more roots growing down deeper in the soil. So do everything you can to reduce compaction. If your roots are deep, chances are they're going to extract more water. And like I said earlier, hopefully you've got some nutrients down there too for them. In order to reduce compaction, you can switch to tracks. You can reduce the air pressure in your tires. You also can do some what we call zone building, taking a straight shank and just going down to 18 or 20 inches deep, not only below your first level of compaction, below the natural layer of compaction in your soil as well. So if you don't think you have compaction, do some root digs out on your farm. Just run a knife up and down those spots and find out what's out there. Certainly you can push a probe down in the soil and see what that looks like as well but I really encourage you dig a root pit and then you'll see where your roots are going how deep they're actually getting. The other thing that I think about when I think about drought proofing my crop is I want to try and have a quick early crop canopy. Maybe that means using some in fertility, maybe that means an early foliar pass or it could just mean planting a higher population or a narrower row spacing. The further we move into dry areas in our country the more benefit we see out of narrowing up those rows so we shade out that ground keep that soil 
cool and keep the sun from drying the soil out as well. The last thing I guess I would mention is variety selection. Now you've heard about drought tolerant corn and artesian corn and everything else. Yes, there are some traits out there. There are some hybrids out there that are certainly better in drier areas. And also we've got multi-hybrid planters coming. We already have multi-hybrid drills if you wanted to drill your corn or change varieties with soybeans or wheat or whatever. So in lighter soils in areas on your farm, you can switch varieties when you get there and then change varieties again when you get back to the good areas. These are all things that I think over time are absolutely going to improve our yield. The other side of it that we already have today on most planters is changing planting population. So as we cross fields on our farm, we're switching, we're going as high as 36 to 40,000 population in the best areas, down to 16 to 18,000 in the very, very sandy areas that are non-irrigated. So we're changing population dramatically just to compensate for good soil versus bad soil. Well, unless you have irrigation, you can't control the rainfall on your farm. So you have to do everything you can with your farming practices to try to drought proof your crop. There's certainly no complete drought proofing out there but there are a lot of steps you can take. They may not cost you much money to do either to drought proof your crop. Like we said earlier though, if you're going to drought proof your crop, you have to get weed control, especially if you have our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to stop it coming up later in the show.